So, as you probably noticed, we skipped skill two when we were doing the visual effects. The reason for that is because for skill two, we're going to use something known as a particle system. Particle systems are used for a variety of effects. They can be used for fire, uh, electricity, energy. They can make dust clouds and fog. Just a lot of things you can do with them using particles. So really, particle systems themselves should be a complete tutorial, and I'll set one up at some point. However, this one is more about integrating a particle system into your project as, as opposed to uh, a comprehensive breakdown of how the particle system itself works. So like I said, I'll have a separate tutorial for this. This is more about get, getting a very basic one and integrating it into a larger project. So to do that, you come up to Game Object and you choose Particle System. And there it appears. So basically, what you're seeing is a default image that has some blur to it, some transparency to it, and you're seeing it moving in a vertical direction. So basically, you can change almost anything. You can change the default particle, you can change the speed, you can change its color, you can change its color over time. We're going to do a few of those. So let's start first with coming over here, and we're going to leave the looping on for now, but when we get into the project itself, we're going to get rid of the looping. It should only run once. So we're going to change how long it lasts. We want it to last about one second only. Now because of the looping, you really can't see that, so if we get rid of the looping, That's how long it lasts. So we'll put the looping back on so we can see it. So the size of the particle is way too big. Now that we changed the size, we're also going to change the shape. So we're going to come down here to renderer. And again, like I said, we're kind of jumping around. Uh, this is more about integrating the particle system into the project as opposed to the particles itself. I'm going to choose stretch to make those more elongated like you'd expect from a uh, fire. Let's change the color. Uh, so let's go to color over lifetime. So it's going to start as a white. Now the bottom here is the colors over the duration of the particle along the top is the opacity. So we're going to click right about here. Click on color and choose a yellow. And what's great is the particle system will automatically take all the in-between colors and choose them for you. So you're really just kind of creating keyframes here about when you want a change to occur by. And all I'm doing is uh, I'm simply clicking on the bottom and it appears. So you could say, why did I create the same color twice? Because if I didn't create this one, this transition would occur all the way here. So what I'm doing is I'm saying I want this entire section to be this color. So let's go up to opacity. Get that fairly transparent at the top but we don't want it to become transparent too quickly. So again, we just click and create another keyframe in there. Now what we need to do is we need to increase the emission. So we click on this and we just bump this up. Now the reason why it's flashing like that is because the particles are acting as if they're like in a 3D environment. So there's no great way around that until we put uh, the code into place to bring it on top of everything else. But by nudging it in production, or should I say in development, it uh, makes it a little bit easier to look at. Now generally you really don't think of fire going out like a cone like that. It could, but for our purposes, and to demonstrate some other functionality, what we're going to do is we're going to change the shape, change that to a box, 
Now we can just start tweaking this a little bit as far as its position. So uh, duration, start lifetime is at one. Let's drop that down to seven. Let's make it 6.65. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the script to this Just add component, new script, and we'll call this fire control. And this is what's going to bring it to the top of everything else. But you'll only see that really when the game is running. So we won't see it while we're doing it right now. We want that to happen as soon as it starts. So again, we use get component like we did before. This time it is the particle system renderer that we want. And then the rest should look familiar. We're choosing the sorting order and it's gonna be three. Now you could use that as just like a pillar of fire. But I, if you think of, say, like a, a campfire, you think of it being more pointed at the top and that it slopes down to being wider at the base. So we're going to actually copy this a few times. So let's first change the name, just fire. You're going to click on that, you're going to copy it, and you're going to paste it. We're also going to give this a slight start delay. Reason for that is this is going to be pushed off to the side, so you want the, the center to start first and then it's spreading out, so you'd want the sides to have a slight delay. And it won't last as long. Now we slide that over, and visually you're starting to get a sense of what we're doing here. We now copy that one, paste it, slide it in the opposite direction. and then we'll do this again. You don't have to move it like I just did. I just did that so visually it lines up in the hierarchy the same way as on the screen. And so we make the same kind of changes. Has a little bit more of a start delay. Doesn't last as long. We copy that slide it over to the other side. And it has all those, we don't have to make those changes again, they're already here. So now let's just run this to see how it looks. So not a very realistic fire, but again, this is just meant for demonstrative purposes. And sometimes you get odd anomalies like this where you might not like how the transparency looks kind of makes it look white, so I think, well, we can keep that, but let's change transparency over time. It's actually, we already did, so let's change size. So size over lifetime, click on that, click on this one, and it'll get smaller at the top. Add a key, we don't want it to get small too soon. And I probably should have done this on the first one before I copied it, but this works out too because since it's incredibly unlikely that I'll get exactly the same, it'll give a little more variance. Okay, so I just jumped ahead so you didn't have to see me make that change to every one of the particle systems. So now what we do is we're going to need to turn these individual particle systems into a single prefab. So first we have to create a parent-child relationship, which is really easy. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping the uh, prospective child to the prospective parent. So we go from, just grab this and bring it up until the parent is highlighted. That's all it takes to turn objects into parent and child. We then take this parent, bring it down there, and now we have our prefab. 
delete the original from the scene. GM is going to get a new object. It has to be made aware of that prefab. So let's go into Battle Flow. And we're going to make this actually a transform instead of a game object because there's a rotation that we need to apply to this because it is a particle system, which we hadn't used up to this point. So let's just call that fire object. And then it's going to appear over here. Let's drag and drop fire on top of that. Come back to our script. Since it's skill 2, we need to put it here. So we're going to instantiate fire object. And this is why we need it to be a transform, is because we have to put in a specific type of rotation. What we're saying is we need to use the object's own rotation. And this causes a little bit of an issue because we're going to have to change this delay. So it's going to stay red for a little bit too long. But that's one of the things we can sort out later. Now this should work. So I'm going to press number two. Fire appeared. Did the appropriate amount of damage and it disappeared. Turns red when it's being burned. Now that looks okay, but the problem is when we go back to the first scale. If we hit number one, see now it's red for a little bit too long. Not a big deal, so we can work on that. So is that there's different delays, but again it depends how complex and how highly refined you want your final product to be.